Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video. My name's Amata, and I hope you're having an amazing day. Now, not to worry about Paul, he's just fine, just working on some other projects for today. So let's get stuck right into our first topic, which unfortunately is some bad news for a new security vulnerability for Ryzen. Now, I'm sure many of you remember the name Meltdown. The security vulnerability that was doing the run some time ago now that only applied to Intel processors. Now, unfortunately, a Meltdown-like vulnerability has been discovered for Ryzen processors. Now, this was initially discovered by some researchers from the Dresden Technology University, Said Ghani Muzaev and Christoph Fetzer. Hopefully, I pronounced their names correctly. And they discovered vulnerabilities in Zen Plus and Zen 2 processors. Now, AMD has officially issued a security update for this on their security website. You can, of course, find that linked below, as well as the official paper on ArcSiv, which was released by the researchers themselves, that goes deep, deep in onto how this vulnerability actually works. Now, unfortunately, while the researchers initially said that this only applied to Zen 2 and Zen Plus processors, AMD themselves have said that all AMD CPUs are vulnerable. So do keep that in mind. And it is very similar to how Meltdown acted for Intel. So what is this vulnerability and how does it work, I hear you ask? Well, it's called the Transient Execution of Non-Canonical Accesses, and I'm sure you'd agree, that just rolls right off the tongue. And it works simply by combining specific software sequences, where AMD CPUs, quote, may transiently execute non-canonical loads and store using only the lower 48 address bits, potentially resulting in data leakage. This data leakage is then used later on to exploit and access possible secrets stored in the PC, which of course is a security issue. Now, I'm sure you guys remember how annoying Meltdown was, and there seemed to be a new software uh, security vulnerability discovered every other week for Intel for a while there. So. The fact that this has already been sent over to AMD and AMD have already addressed it, hopefully will not become as much of a pain as Meltdown was. The researchers that did inform AMD of this back in October of 2020 and gave them enough time to develop a mitigation technique which they have detailed on their security website. AMD themselves have recommended that all software vendors do ship code for its platforms revisit their programs and add mitigations for this new vulnerability. Obviously not great that this is you know, existing in all Ryzen processes, but obviously it's been discovered and a mitigation has of course been issued, but we still have the issue of it actually being implemented. As I said, the white paper and AMD's security website, which also has its own PDF, which goes very in depth into this vulnerability and obviously the mitigations they recommend. So if you want to give it a read, Perhaps you want some light bedtime reading. <laughs> it is there for your perusal. But speaking of AMD, I want to move swiftly on to that leaked 6900 XTX, which has been doing the rounds. So the initial source for this was Cyberpunk, sorry, Cybercat Punk over on Twitter. You can, of course, find their tweet linked in the description below this video. And without much comment, they simply shared an image of a new quote unquote Radeon GPU, the 6900 XTX, and there is a few specifications listed on the image as well. So this image does seem to suggest that there is a third model for the 6900 XT, but as I'm about to go into, that isn't the case. You may recall that AMD made a decision to launch Navi 21 XTX H GPUs for ultra high end models equipped with air coolers, and several models include like ASRock, Power Red Devil Ultimate, there's also a sapphire air-cooled one, and we also have the 6900 XT liquid-cooled model, which launched exclusively for OEMs and system integrators. So we have two other versions of the 6900 XT, and obviously the FE edition, but that's not really relevant to this. We're talking about the XTX and XTLC models here, because, well... Both the XTXH, which was released with air coolers for several OEMs, has nearly identical specifications to what we see here. Now, the only change we see is an 18 GBPS memory upgrade, which actually already exists on the 6900 XT liquid cooled model. So, with those two GPUs already in existence and obviously already targeting their specific, their specific markets. I don't really see much of a reason at all for AMD to launch yet another model, especially when they share the same specifications. So this XTX and the liquid cooled model sharing the same specs and existing in the same market, as I'm sure you'd agree, makes no sense at all. And even an air cooled model still exists, it just doesn't have that 18 GBPS memory upgrade. And even Grayman 55, I'm sure you remember, has been very active in the AMD leak space, proven to be fairly reliable has not heard of such a skew either. 
But at the moment, no one has heard of this card. You know, several uh, outlets have reached out to their sources, and no one has heard of this card. So let's just say we're probably not going to see a third edition to the 6900 XT liner. So what is this image, I hear you ask? Well, it almost is certainly the liquid 6900 XT that again already exists as I discussed earlier in this topic. But let's finish up with a brief visit to our friends over at, at Nvidia. So you may have seen the reports doing the rounds that we will see a decrease, a significant decrease in supply for the RTX 3060 Ti and RTX 3060 in September. Now, in case you missed it, the initial source for this was a Chinese site, the Board Channels Forums. Now this isn't just some random message board, it is a closed forum for people working with AIBs, OEMs, and so on with the exchange of information on the current market situation now according to a post from a member on there we will they are expecting to see excuse me a reduction of 50 percent in shipments until at least late september where the supply is expected to bounce back once again now we decided to reach out to our sources to basically see what they've been hearing and whether or not we could actually back this report up. Now they basically said that both AMD and Nvidia have been producing more chips than they previously were, much more, and the RTX 3060 and 3060 Ti do have much more availability again, and again so does AMD and other Nvidia cards such as the RTX 3070 as well, but the issue is even though they are producing more chips, they are still struggling to keep up with the insane demand at the moment, because again we're not talking about the cards just going to gamers. Obviously companies like Cyberpower, Dell, whoever, are just hoovering up so many cards and Nvidia are increasing shipments to them because of the amount of scalpers that are unfortunately still obviously a huge problem in the GPU market. You know, the GPU market is just insane at the moment. And obviously add on top of that, that demand from you know gamers and hardware enthusiasts is also higher than usual. So they're just struggling to keep up with this demand despite the higher production, at least again, according to what our sources have been saying. Now supply is more than it was several months ago. We have seen that reflected in several reports at this point, but it's still, again, just not keeping up with the demand. Now in case any of you are wondering, you know, what, could possibly be causing all of this. Well, apparently, according to our sources, it is the substrate that is causing these issues, but again, you know, the usual pinch of salt TM is required. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is hugely appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.